FM. Radio has never been better. What is up? Hey guys. This is the movie show. On your favorite ORSP. I am Sesh. And my name is Ryan. And today we are continuing with our guy Richie Marathon. Oh yeah, hey, we were doing that, right? Yes, we were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've looked at both Sherlock Holmes films, which mm. were directed by Guy Ritchie. We looked at Snatch. We looked at uh, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. We even, we even looked at Operation Fortune, which is his latest yeah. film. Actually, no, wait. No, his latest film hasn't come out yet. So it yeah. is his latest film. He has another latest one coming release. out. Yes, yeah, called The Covenant. But that has not yet come out. It is mm -hmm. soon coming out, though. Um, yeah, so we, we actually didn't go in any particular order with this. We I think with Quentin Tarantino, we actually went in the correct order. Yeah. But with this, we didn't. We, we just chose. We and so this week, we are looking at a film from 2008. It is called Rock and Roller. Rock and Roller. <laughs> There we go. Thanks, Ryan. Rock and roll. For, for the accent. Um, yeah, so, Ryan, your impressions of this film? I liked the cost. Mm -hmm. It was good. The story was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, drugs and, uh, you know, mm. gangsters and mobs. <laughs> lots, lots of that side of town, you know. Uh, shoot, shoot to kill. Shoot, shoot you. you. You have what's mine. I kill you. <laughs> I kill you. And, uh, yeah, and some paintings involved. Or painting. Did you enjoy this film? Uh, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's it's very it's a it, it's a very dirty film. It is very yeah, and uh, films like that you just kind of like. Okay, I must be honest. I get where you're going. I get where you're going. Yeah. I, I see the picture you're trying to tell. I I can see the story, interesting story. Yeah. For me, this film mm. was just one too many. Mm. I, I don't know. I, and I love Guy Ritchie. But watching this film, in fact, I had to force myself. I honestly, I had yeah. to force myself to watch this movie. Like, exactly. I like started it. And you know when you feel like, okay, I've watched at least like an hour. And you realize mm. you're only 20 minutes in. Mm. Like that was this film. I, I And also... So like Guy Ritchie often will show like, you know, the rough side of London type of thing. That's yeah. his like, or the, the rough side of the mm. UK, you know, that's his focus points. But I just felt like, you know, we've got Snatch, we've got Lock, Stock and yeah. Two Smoking Barrels. We even have The Gentleman. We don't need this film. Like, honestly, that's just, that was just my opinion of, of this film. Mm. I, I just was like, mm, okay, I've se I've, I, I felt like I'd, I've seen this before. You know exactly it's it's i've we've done this before like yeah, yeah like yeah. we need something new now the only thing that i that i look forward to or that i enjoyed was the cost because there were some faces yeah that that i like there's mm. some actors yeah that yeah that, that i like the cast uh, was very interesting mm. yeah so gerald butler no no who, no no, no, no so, oh, say it in there no now we're <laughs> No, Ryan, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> because, of the, because he's Scottish. Yeah. And we actually spoke about this guy. In actually, our it's not Gerald. It's G G Gerard. 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 Gerard Butler. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't expect him. I did. I never expected it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then Tom Hardy. Yeah. I honestly did not like him, though, uh, because uh, they made him gay. I was just uh, like, uh, how do you make Tom Hardy <laughs> gay? Like, who does that? What's wrong with you, man? Uh, yeah. It's uh, just Alba. I enjoyed it. Just yes, Alba. Yeah. I always like it. Just Alba in like these him. type of roles. Yeah. Like him and then um, Tandiwe Newton. Um, yeah. That was interesting. Mm. That was interesting. This, mm. he was my favorite character. Mark Strong played Archie. And from the start of the film, I liked Archie. Yeah. And this is very interesting because Mark Strong, the only other film I, re okay, no, I'm lying. There's another film I recognize him. That's Shazam. The I don't know if he's in the that's second one. That's, yeah. But the, he's in the first Shazam. But the only other film I recognize him from is the first Sherlock Holmes. He was the villain. I don't know. So Shazam 2. I'm don't gonna spoil. I haven't watched it yet. He's in the post credits. Okay. That's it. <laughs> really? Yeah. So in other words, it's a lead up to three. To, yes. Shazam three. For those who have watched Shazam two, they're like, huh? wait, why didn't I wait? Why didn't we see? The and then after this, you can go back mm. and watch it again. Yes. But I know him. Like Mark Strong normally is the villain. Like even in Shazam, mm. he's the villain. So like you kind of get used to him playing that type of role. But in this, he was completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Like I liked. I don't mm. normally like Mark Strong in films because he's the villain, you know. And he's a very good villain. I'll give it to like. Is I'll he give British it to or American? I have no I'll, idea. He's British. 
His British accent was wow. very good. Yeah. He's no he mm. I can honestly say my favorite character was Archie. Like on and the way mm. I'll I'll give it this, the way it ended, I was happy. So like they and with this with this type of film you also don't know who the main character is like at one point i was like whose story is it like no who, this is whose just story are we following that's here that's what i'm saying it's like it's just there's a lot yeah and there was even like a subplot wasn't there there were lots of plots like the fact that mm. gerard butler is on the main like i get it but also i don't mm. get it because like the movie actually isn't about him mm. the movie is actually about Toby Kibble, who played Johnny Quid, mm. that actually is, but he only gets introduced like halfway through, yeah. and like yeah, no, but I would definitely actually say that Mark Strong, so Archie was the protagonist, yeah. shockingly enough. Mm. But I like the way it ended. So even though the movie was like, uh, 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 by the time mm. it, it when it got to the end, I was like, mm. okay, that was a good ending. Yeah. That was actually a very good ending. Mm. Yeah, and then I feel like the painting is the. The, the main character. Yes. Except you never mm. see the painting. Mm -hmm. You never saw the painting. <laughs> probably wasn't even a painting. It was probably just like... That, that, that. I must say that I think that was smart. Maybe maybe Guy Ritchie did that to... to you know, j j just that it's not about... The, it's not a... It's about the painting, but it's not about the painting kind yeah. of thing. It's just it to actually put more is focus about, on the, the characters. But now you see, this is a he's mm. done this before. He did it in Snatch with yeah. the diamond. Yeah, true. Do you understand what I'm true. saying? So yes, mm. it's a style of his. But it's, if you're gonna go and make something so similar, mm. you need to make you need to change it up. You know, it's an equivalent to the briefcase with um, Quentin Tar with Quentin Tarantino. It was Quentin in, in, Pulp, in, Fiction. in Pulp Fiction. Mm. It's like, dude, forget about the case. It's not about the case, but it is about the case. Yes. But it's not about the case. It's yeah. about the people dealing with the case. That's it. But it's about the case. Exactly. But you're not going to see what's inside. All the mobs <laughs> and gangs that were trying to get their yeah. hands and trying to steal. Yeah. Anyway. What was interesting was I don't know if you saw at the end of the credits. Um, was it the end of the? Oh no, the end of before the credits. They said Archie and Johnny would return in rock and roll, rock and rock and roller, real rock and roller, or something like that. And I then went and searched because when I was looking at Guy's uh, filmography, they didn't have like Rock and Roller 2 or, or they didn't have another. It was only this one. Mm. And apparently, so this was made in 2008. Apparently, um, before, so he was going to make Rock and, I think it's the real Rock and Roller. I could be wrong, but I think that's what the second one was supposed to be called. But then he ended up making Sherlock Holmes instead. Yeah. And then he never got a chance to go back and actually make. So mm. this one is like, it was supposed to have a sequel, but it doesn't. However, I... I think from a career move, Guy Ritchie was very smart to go into Sherlock Holmes because Sherlock Holmes was completely different. Yeah, mm. he kind of was making the same films over and over and over. And as much as like Snatch was good, this one, he was like me. Mm. And this film uh, hit top of the box office in its first week of release. Really? In the UK, yeah. Wow. So, so it did do well. It's not like there was no reason not to release like a what do they call it like a, a second one yeah yeah maybe just didn't feel like it they did yeah he's like meh did you um in did you recognize jamie campbell um mm. bauer in it so you know who that is right he's the dude that plays vecna he was he had a very he basically had a cameo <laughs> right. he was i don't know when they first introduced um mickey and roman uh, who were the two pro music producers or club owners uh, he was the rocker that came in and complained <laughs> that there wasn't any dry eyes that was him i was like oh my goodness he was still fat in his face i don't know how to explain uh, so you know how like when you're younger you like kind of have baby fat like uh, that's the best way i can describe it because now he's very lean yeah but like yeah, yeah i mean this was 2008 so it's like a long time ago but he still had like baby fat but the other thing that's weird about this film is it's only one hour and 54 minutes yeah. so it's not even like it's not one of Guy Ritchie's longest films and yet I really was just like mm. like it for me it honestly it was a struggle to watch like how did you find yeah. the the pace of the film I don't think it was the pace that was the problem mm. but it, but how did you find it was it was it just like <laughs> I think it's you're trying to figure out why this per, this next person has in, mm. been introduced. Mm. So it kind of because he, he introduces you to a lot of characters. Yeah. So you like start. In fact, how did the film? Oh, the how did the film start? That's terrible. You see, that's and I like just watched it. <laughs> I remember they had that whole like explanation of what a rock and roller was, yeah. and then it went to. <laughs> I don't even remember. That's terrible. You see what you see what we're saying. 
I remember the end of the film. Yeah, no, it was, it was. But now, you know the guy that played Johnny Quid, so the son? Oh, that's where I recognize him from. I recognized the actor, but I couldn't put my finger on it. He was in Ben-Hur. The, the recent Ben... You know, they made an old Ben-Hur. Oh, really? And then they made a 2016 version. He was in that. He was in Ben-Hur. Mm. In fact, I think he played the... Is it, is it Ben-Hur? <laughs> and then Wrath of the Titans. He was in Wrath of the Titans. He was in Kong Skull. Oh, yeah, he was in Kong Skull Island. Was he? Yes, I remember. I knew I recognized his face. But you know when you can't place an actor, you're just like, why do I know this guy? That was one of those moments. I feel like it's most of the time I'm just like, I've seen this guy. Or I have to shuffle through so many faces. Mm. You know, I think his problem is, I could be wrong, but he's been in a lot of films, but I don't think he's been the main character. You know, like he's never been able to Mm. land. Okay, this one, he he landed quite a major role. But, and I think in Ben-Hur, I could be, I think he was the main character in Ben-Hur. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah. and like, what has he done recently? Twenty twenty, he was in he was in Bloodshot. That was with um, Vin Diesel. Do you remember um, that movie? Yeah, yeah. But now I don't remember him from that movie. I think that might be his latest piece of work. Was twenty? Oh no, there's also a mm. movie called Becoming twenty twenty as well. But I didn't see that. Yeah, so he's there. He's there, but he's he's there. He's, he's there. He's there, but he's not there. He's there, but he's not there. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, um, yeah. Yeah, it was just, yeah. <laughs> it was one of those like, okay, clearly Guy Ritchie, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I think for me, so like comparing Guy Ritchie to other um, directors, he's very good. Um, but I almost feel like he's, he's stuck in a box. I don't know how to explain it. Mm. Like, for example... You get certain directors that, like, for example, Steven Spielberg. You could watch a Steven Spielberg film and not know it's Steven Spielberg, but still enjoy the film. Do you understand what I'm saying? I guess it's his, his taste, his trait, you know. So with him, there's always a gang involved. There's always drugs and a lot of money to a point. Or like we said, it's that rough, that rough part of London. Yeah. People think that, you know, only in New York it's rough. Guy Ritchie shows us that no, 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 no. There's a lot happening. You know, it's not just that prim and proper <laughs> in London. Which we often see. There's the streets and then there's between. Yeah. Hmm. So just some very interesting trivia points, right? So apparently Christopher Nolan said that um, it was his performance in this film that convinced him to cast Tom Hardy in Inception oh, wow. and The Dark Knight Rises. So this this yeah. is the film that got maybe that's what this film was for you know it was for other films <laughs> it was to to yeah broadcast talent mm. that's very interesting though wait to broadcast Tom Hardy in S- so Christopher Nolan saw Tom Hardy in this mm-hmm. film and as a result that convinced him to cast him first of all in Inception and then in Dark the Dark Knight Rises in Dark Knight he was that he was weird, Banner the, that weird with the yeah. <laughs> But that, but he had a high pitched voice. Yeah, he did, and a British accent, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't like. <clears throat> no. It was kind of weird. It, it was, was like weird. A, it was a posh monster. <laughs> it was <laughs> like you didn't Basically. expect it. Mm. Like what? All right. Well, no. do you want to mess with us? <laughs> yes, that's exactly how <laughs> exactly. he sounded. <laughs> ah, two for the price of one. You're just like. Here's a deal. But apparently Tom Hardy says that when people want him to like... So he played another character in mm. Peaky Blinders called um, so, uh, Solomon something. Solomon something. But he was... Um, he, has a, he has a very distinct accent in that film. Like, I mean, in that series. Like, mm. very distinct. And you'd think people would want... Him, it's Alfie Solomon. That's his character's name. You'd think that people would want him to do that accent. And he says, no. The, one that, the accent they want me to do the most is the Bane accent. Oh, really? Not Banner. His name was... Um, did I say Banner? Yeah, I think that's so. That's his name. Bane. Bane. Mm. Bane. That, w- that's, that was his character's name. Mm. Yeah. And then according to Guy Ritchie, this film was supposed to be a trilogy. So not even two films, three films. Um, and that's why before the credits, there is the title card that reads, The Wild Bunch Will Return in the Real Rock and Roller. Hinting that this will be the title of the next installment, which has not happened. No. And it doesn't look like it's happening. Since 2008. And then, uh, so Ger- Ger- Gerald, Gerard. How would it continue though? How would it? What? What's next? I with feel the, like Johnny Quid would have like taken over his father. Stay? 
he would have taken over his father's gang. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. Position. And then? And then, and but he was friends with um, one, two, and uh, what what was that? Bob and... Um, Maybe they try and steal the painting or, you know, this painting is mine. You Maybe. gave it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You double crosser. I am personally <laughs> not sad you. that this se- although gu- this sequel. Let me finish. Mm. What I was gonna say that this sequel mm. didn't happen. Although Guy Ritchie has a lot of like non-finished work. Yeah. Because like the same happened with um, Sherlock Holmes. Apparently mm. Aladdin. So he he remade the live action Aladdin. Apparently Aladdin. There's supposed to be an Aladdin two. I don't know when it's coming out, but I have seen it before. But then, and I don't know. So is, I don't know if that's going to actually happen. It's like the Lion King too, <clears throat> because the first one's made out of the originals mm. back in the day. Although there is an Aladdin. And then too. it's like, okay, cool. And there's a Lion King too in animation. No, no, the the real, li- yeah, but, but they, they all start off with the original yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So same story, you know, find the lamp, da da da. The girl, no, but it's in like Jasmine, Aladdin, Aladdin, the cartoon. World. There yeah. was a second oh. film. Yeah. And what, I think there was a happened? third film. What happened in the second one? Anyway, it was a good start. <laughs> <laughs> it was a I good start. I remember Aladdin with, I think it was the Ten Thieves, and he still, he does the whole open sesame thing. He goes there. That I remember. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if that was the second one, although I don't, yeah. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. So Ger- Gerard Butler's character's name was one, two. Jared. And apparently the house number where one, two lives is oh, yeah. three, four. <laughs> <laughs> I found that so odd. Eh? One, two. One, two. Uh, I was like, huh? Yeah. Do you think it's because you like, that's how you kill people or something? One, two. I don't know. They all had weird names. It was <laughs> one, two, handsome Bob yeah. was gay. And then um, Mumbles mm. Mm. was Idris Elba. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was. It was, it was an okay film. It was an, it was an okay mm. film. It really was an mm. okay film. Mm. Yeah. So apparently Yuri's painting, which is the painting that we've been talking about, yes. is an un- an important connection of the parties involved in the flot. Uh, what am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Let Basically, them. what they're saying here is that it's never shown in the movie, which we already said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then when Lenny Cole and Yuri are talking business after the first payment of money has been stolen, there are oranges on the table. Um and they are having a drink. There are oranges at the table that they're having a drink at. The presence of oranges foreshadows the death of a character, much like they do in the Godfather trilogy, which they do in the Godfather trilogy whenever you see oranges which, on screen. Which we said that we were going to look into. Yeah, we right? need to do the Godfather mm. trilogy. Mm. And then after stealing the second money delivered delivery to Yuri, it was acting, man, from the Russian heavies, um, the... Uh, the wild bunch end up running off on foot in three directions. Both Handsome Bob, which was Tom Hardy, and Mumbles, Idris Alba, are clearly carrying briefcases with the handcuffed chain hanging from the handles, presumably because they cut the chains rather than the handcuffs. I don't know what the point of that is, but that whole sequence was, mm. was interesting, though. Mm. You know, the film... I, 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 from a recommendation perspective, Mm-mm. I personally wouldn't recommend this. Won't even film. think about it. Yeah, like I won't be on our thought list. Yeah, it's just lots like, of other great films. I'm always not really mm. interested now in watching mm. like his other films around this era because I'm mm. scared he like. Yeah, it's just a re- lots of other repeat. Films. You know, Jungle Cruise two, that sort of stuff. That's yeah. not Guy Ritchie. <laughs> that ain't Guy Ritchie. <laughs> I'm talking so about maybe it would films. be good if it was Guy Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be interesting. If if Jungle Cruise two is directed by Guy Ritchie, uh, I'll watch it. Uh, the rock would have a, a, a an English accent, <laughs> and they wouldn't be in a jungle. They'd be in London. There we go. The jungle. Back the the jungle of London. Yes. London is a jungle. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah so that was rock and roller. We cost. Guy Ritchie's. We cost the Russian an arm and a leg. Mm-hmm. It's one of Guy Ritchie's films mm. somewhere before Sherlock Holmes. At mm. least Sherlock Holmes was better. Mm. So all those who hated on Sherlock Holmes, it's better than this. Yes. Except I feel like those people would like this film. Probably everyone's got their, their taste. Yeah, okay. In our personal opinions, mm. this yeah. was an okay film. Mm. Yeah. So she would watch Barbie. I won't watch Barbie. Uh, I would watch Jungle Cruise 2. So she won't watch Jungle Cruise 2. So everyone's got their preferences. Their things, you know? <laughs> there so we yeah. go. So until next week, this has been the movie show. We will see you then. And we'll be looking forward to that, right? 
It's our next film. We will. Yes. Okay. We don't know what it is yet, but we will. Yes, we will. <laughs> Coming next week. See Surprise. you then. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>